Well, it's a brand new thing, really, with this whole concept of bringing in world leaders, world thinkers, world-class thinkers from all over the world to find out who we are, what we are doing, what our skills are, what the gaps might be in that field of work. He could have arrived and said, I'm here and this is what you should do, and I've seen this model, and it works in France. To him, it wasn't in the, you know, Peter Wintonic's approach <laughs> to, to stand up and say, right, this is what you should do. Ladies and gentlemen, for now it's time to welcome to the stage a thinker, the director, producer, the teacher, the mentor, this, this cinema equivalent of a man of letters. Please welcome our very good friend, Peter Wintonic. It's not disputable that we are surrounded by media. We are engaging with new media, mobile technologies, the computer, the television, etc. Um, every day, all day, virtually. And it would be a rare occasion when you're not engrossed somehow, at least a part of you is engrossed somehow with the media. So that needs to be recognised in education as being highly significant. We have to develop citizens into what I call producers. It's a kind of play on the producer word. These are individuals who can both produce their own media and use or consume media. And one whole school turned its attention to the idea of fear. There were uh, classroom discussions about fear and poems about fear and community surveys about fear. And here's a, a little excerpt from a film about fear that Jason made. Clutch, it's scarier when you haven't been over one before. The most fearful part is crossing the water to me because I'm scared I might slip and fall in. I'm just scared someone will push me over. Students need to be guided to find their own power in the use of the new digital tools as a means of self-expression and self-confidence. Our kids don't want to be media consumers, they want to be media creators. Hi, I'm Kathleen from Laura Pindy School. Today I'm talking about the effects of smoking cigarettes and cannabis. How much do you think you're going to bring your own opinions into it when you're interviewing people? When we get into Make Nunga TV and work with photos and video and, and bits of text, that sort of stuff, something else happens. And in that arena, we can be, you know, really quite quite good media creators. With Peter's visit, it's, it's helped us find a voice and project a voice. We have an alternate curriculum. These are kids who have fallen through the cracks of the system all the way along and have attended very little schooling. So the traditional literacy in reading and writing and arithmetic just really don't cut it for these kids. They haven't been at school long enough to really get into that. So we're looking for those areas where these kids can succeed. At the same time, sort of giving a, a human face to Indigenous culture, yeah, because uh, as I was saying before, you just don't see it on TV. <laughs> So, a lot of my work here really is about um, fusing the ideas of democracy with documentary, in fact, into a word I call uh, lately "documocracy," which is uh, <laughs> uh, it's maybe, maybe making mocking fun of democracy, which is probably something that it should be ridiculed in, in most of its iterations. But it's uh, at least it's about turning power over to to communities and to students and to and using. Uh, the, the tools to uh, uh, tell stories. Yeah, that we are living in, in in a very kind of privileged walled garden here in the center of uh, of this uh, urban sphere. But we have to also remember that we have to sort of transcend that wall in a way, with uh, especially with the kind of uh, digital tools that our children can uh, can uh, teach us how to use. I, I think uh, 
when you look at it, there, there's that kind of official documentary, but there's also the documentary that I like, which are the, the, um, the handy cam, essentially, in the hands uh, of uh, ordinary citizens. The documentary is an interactive database, essentially, and, and it's about access and points of view, the different points of view that, that creators have on certain realities, and it's, it's not really about truth with a capital T at all but it's really truth that, uh, to use John luc Godard's kind of analogy, it's not just truth at 24 frames a second anymore, it's truth at a, at a thousand frames a second. We are in some ways already prepared with a foundation to actually launch into what Peter's talking about in this arena of digital delivery of content and so on. And realistically, uh, a place like Adelaide can't be making Hollywood films, it has to be encouraging a new kind of independent vision. South Australians often believe that um, we have to look outside in order to create something good and if it's from Sydney therefore it's good, if it's from Adelaide it might not be very good. I mean it's a small and uh, uh, city in a sense but it's among the, the, the world's cities and uh, there's no reason why the kind of South Australian story can not be uh, uh, told and enabled and uh, screened and, and resonate with uh, people all over the world. I think what Peter did was make everyone aware that we, if we bring everything together we've actually got quite a lot here already. I would want to imagine what it would be like to rebuild Adelaide into a docutopia or a digitopia or an adultopia. Make South Australia the knowledge state where the state of knowledge leads the nation. Make South Australia the art state, where the state of art is second to none. Make South Australia the state where the screen is both a mirror and an agent for change. The Democracy Series is hugely ambitious. The idea is that sometime in February 2007, they actually take over the schedule of all those television stations globally and for that full week, every single project on the screen at night is about democracy. I think democracy is in a bit of crisis uh, around the world. There's a lot of emerging democracies. Democracies are uh, in transition. And one person's democracy is another person's dictatorship, it seems. It's such a beautifully synchronous topic. It gives us the possibility now of bringing forward student voice and community voice through the making of media and to develop the curriculum materials that will support these international films. This uh, whole thinking thing really has been one of the most incredible experiences in my, uh, I would say short life, but my medium-sized life. Uh, and uh, I've been really kind of challenged to uh, look at a a big picture of a society and to, to sort of challenge my own preconceptions uh, by listening and observing. When I come back I'd like to see that uh, media literacy is blooming and uh, there are 500 flowers, of filmmaking flowers, filmmakers and media makers that are blooming and, and there's a rich kind of garden of promise and opportunity here. I'm very grateful to actually have been involved with Peter and his work while, for the time he was here. Um, and it would be very hard to overstate the effect, you know, that it's going to have on the school and our community. Um, because it's brought to light, as I said before, you know, parts of, um, it's given a legitimacy to what's trying to happen here.